काफी टाइम से रिक्वेस्ट आ रही थी कि जोग्राफी नाउ इंडिया पे वीडियो डालो क्योंकि ये एक वीडियो काफी पॉपुलर थी और स्पेशली फॉरनर्स के बहुत सारे रिएक्शन है इसमें मेरे ख्याल से एक ही है पाकिस्तान की वो कि बाकी सारे फॉरनर्स ही है इस वीडियो में तो देखते फिर आज के मिक्स मैसेज रिएक्शन आपको मिक्स रिएक्शन अगर पसंद आए तो वीडियो को लाइक जरूर करना चैनल को सब्सक्राइब जरूर करना इन दिस एपिसोड व्हाट आई विल ट्राई माय बेस्ट अ लॉट ऑफ यू इंडियन ज्योग्राफी पीपल्स हैव हेल्प मी अलोंग द वे सो थैंक यू एंड विदाउट फर्दर आडियो लेट्स बिगिन इट्स टाइम टू लर्न ज्योग्राफी नाउ एवरीबॉडी आई एम योर होस्ट बारबी दिस प्लेस डजंट इवन नीड मच ऑफ एन इंट्रोडक्शन एवरीबॉडी हैज हर्ड ऑफ इंडिया इट्स बिग दैट्स कलरफुल एंड मोर इट हैज अ प्लेथरा ऑफ कंफ्यूजिंग टेरिटोरियल एनॉमलीज दैट आई जस्ट कैन्ट वेट टू कवर हियर वी टेरिटोरियल एनॉमलीज आई नो अबाउट दैट Political saying. India is a place where everyone is in a hurry, but really? no one is ever on time. Really? India is located in South Asia, right on the I Indian Ocean, right? seas, and the Bay of Bengal, bordered by six other countries. So close to seven, but that land bridge between Sri Lanka got wiped away like 600 years ago by a cyclone. Oh. India is divided into 29 states and seven union territories, with the capital New Delhi, which acts as its own administrative unit, located in the capital Kinda territory. Kind of like DC. Mind, New Delhi right? is actually just the name of one of the districts in the capital territory, made up of 11. The largest city, however, is actually Mumbai, with New Delhi. <laughs> Bangalore or Bengaluru and Hyderabad following after however the four busiest airports are Delhi Indira Gandhi International Look Mumbai's Chhatrapati Shivaji oh, International Bengaluru's Kempe Golda International and Chennai International in the south ah uh, you know why i'm smiling this is my favorite part of any episode we ever make territorial anomalies all right it is loaded with strange borders and deliciously complex oh, territories delicious i'm ready for what that what exactly is a union territory in the simplest way i can put this union territories are places that are too distinct to be incorporated into a state but too small to have their own local governments. The first one of oh, course is the Delhi this. National Capital Territory where the capital lies. Chandigarh is a post independent city Chandigarh. constructed to replace Lahore as the capital of the Punjab area after it was split up between India and Pakistan. Right. Then you have the island territories, the smallest one Lakshadweep and the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman Islands belong to one of the last uncontacted people groups on the planet, the Sentinelese tribe oh. who have been hostile to visitors and are therefore left alone, as well as the Nicobar oh, Islands which actually used to be a short lived colony of Denmark. Finally, the three remaining territories are former Euro European colony towns and ports Dadra and Nagar Haveli Daman and Diu which are separated by about 200 kilometers across the Gulf of Kambat and the most confusing union territory the French speaking Puducherry which is actually split up between four district cities across India Kanyakal Yamnaon and Pondicherry Pondicherry is strange because it has 11 enclaves within the Tamil Nadu state or in this area you can also find the experimental hippie-ish commune with a little bit of controversy Oh my god there you get here the eastern states also known as the Sindh like district are connected by this incredibly narrow 27 Kilometer wide pathway known as the Siliguri Corridor. This pathway is like a crucial artery that completes the India puzzle, or so you would think. Now let's discuss the juicy oh, stuff. Oh yeah, now, like in the juicy. China episode, I already talked about the disputed areas with India, such as Assam, Arunachal Pradesh. I know about China, some of that. Pradesh, the latter pretty much just belonging to India, as it's almost completely inhabited and operated by Indians. Okay. So let's move to the other disputes. Now, as of 2015, the Bangladesh episode is already outdated, as India and Bangladesh have finally come to an agreement over the frighteningly complex former enclave oh, enclave dispute. In the end, India only lost. about 40 square kilometers of land to Bangladesh and now only a few enclaves and exclaves exist. Now let's head North. Now, when you try to draw the shape of India, you might want to be careful which depiction you use. Some might use this picture, some might use this, some might use this. Why they got all kinds of different ones? Some might use this. The point is that's Italy. Area, I know that. It's a heavily militarized, <laughs> diplomatically stressed out region on the planet. It's already had like four wars in the past half century. Basically, India, Pakistan, and to some extent China all want the entire area for themselves. Although it's more of like a Pakistan-India thing. In the China uh -huh. episode, we already discussed China the Chinese dispute with in, India, huh? so I won't cover those in this episode. <laughs> if you want to learn more, just watch the China episode. But anyway, this entire Era was a former domain known as the princely state of Jammu and Kashmir that was under royal Maharaja rulers all the way up until independence. This Currently, this place lot. is split up by this fenced-off militarized line known as the Line of Control oh, between India and Pakistan. Why is this? Well, in the quickest way I can put this, okay, the British are out. We get to take your land. Uh, no, we want to be an independent princely state. <laughs> uh, we're supposed to take your land. And oh, okay. Majority of your people are Muslim, just like us. Even though your ruler is Hindu as well. Hey, India. Yeah. If you help me, I'll let you secede my territory to your land with autonomy. Deal. Oh god. <laughs> Your problem now. I love how Mike plays India. <laughs> Oh, and keep in mind, Pakistan's capital, Islamabad, is less than 80 kilometers away from all that drama. Oh, a lot wow. of control meanders through the mountains until it stops at a point called Pakistan NJ982. India have two. This they, is where things get really things crazy in. because from there you hit the Siachen Glacier, the second longest non-polar glacier in the world, and this is pretty much the dead man zone. After What? point NJ9842, you hit the actual ground position line, a series of military outposts that extend oh. all the way to the Chinese border. That means everything in this 
area is ground zero for the Indo-Pak tension. And you know, the crazy thing is there's actually literally small towns of normal regular civilians living in these areas high up in the mountains, many of which just go about daily oh. life, going to work and raising their families. Otherwise, they have a river dispute with Nepal and various river islands disputes. There's all with kind of disputes Dash. going Outside on with that, huh? though, India not only has the world's second largest road network and three of the world's top 10 mega cities nice. and their own space program, nice. they also have a copious abundance of landmarks and notable sites. You know Way that. too many to list, but some of the ones that you guys, the Indian geography peeps, have told me to mention include places like the abandoned okay. Danush Kodi Ghost City, Golconda Fort, ghost. the Four Pillars of Charminar, the Ajanta Buddhist Art Caves, the Alora Monolithic Ruins, oh, Mandu Fortress, oh, the Golden gorgeous. Temple, which Golden Temple, people a day, the Golgumbaz Mausoleum, the Kalavantin Dur Post, the ruins of Hampi, the hill forts of Rajasthan, Chaturunjaya Hill, which is basically like a mecca for Jains, I want to see all the that. Bodhi Tree, the Jal Mahal, Bangar Fort, the most haunted place in India. Oh, no, I ain't going there. Just like in China, you can find a great wall of fort. India in Rajsaman. There's also the Paritala Anjanea Temple with the largest statue in India depicting Hanuman. And at over 150 acres, the Sri Rangan Ataswami Temple, the largest Hindu oh, temple that's in the beautiful. world. Oh, yeah, Look and there's that. also that building with the stuff in the thing. Taj Mahal, I knew that one! The century's talking about India's rich constructed <laughs> and that's the only one lies on top of is even more fascinating. <laughs> Physical now, geography. don't make this mistake. I'm going to India. All I need are my sandals and sunscreen. <laughs> now, as the seventh largest country in land area, India has a wide range of landscapes, climates, and elevations that all contrast from one corner to the other. First of all, let's talk about the north. Oh. India sits on the Indian tectonic plate that essentially smashed into the Eurasian plate, which in return created the largest mountain range in the oh, world, yeah. the Himalayas. Okay. The forces well, associated with the estimated that the Himalayas grow about 2.4 inches or 6.1 centimeters every year. Oh. Also, we can find Kanchenjunga, the tallest Ooh. mountain in India, or the third in the world right on the border of Nepal. Keep your eye on That's these mountains. Right. Is these that are right pretty much the side? source of most of India's major rivers that give life to the whole country. Mm. That's why India takes these mountains so seriously. You can also find the largest natural lake, Ular, up in the Jammu Kashmir area. Below the mountains. Himalayas, you reach the North Indian River Plain, sometimes referred to as the Indus Ganga. This is the most fertile part of India where the most important rivers like the Ganges and its tributaries flow. Heading a little south, you reach the Satpura and Vindhya ranges I'm that pretty much divide so North India there. from South India. On each side, you get the West and East Ghat Mountains, which in return creates a lot of mountainous areas in there, huh? Plateau. This place is moderately forest, especially in the east, in the Chotra Nagpur Plateau, where you get a section of the swampy Sunderbans There's that a they lot of mountain Bangladesh, ranges the Bangladesh stuff. episode. Head a little west and you get the dry tar desert along too. the border with Pakistan, as well as the Ron of Kuch, known as the Salt Kuch. Desert. And finally, <laughs> the only active volcanic area would be the Adaman and Nicobar Islands, with well, Barren Island having though. actual Look conical eruptions, and Baratan having Look tame mud beautiful volcanoes. that is. Now, here's the thing. Although India has a relatively high population density, they do relatively well with maintaining their ecological footing. That's in fact, right in 2016, India. they That's right. a record by planting, disputably, 50 million trees in one day. They've also agreed to reforest about 12% of their country by 2030. That's right, my India, y'all! The seven sister states in East India. Now, one of the factors that contributes to this would be the fact that India has the lowest meat consumption in the world, oh. with the highest population percentage of vegetarians at around 40%. Like most of whom are lacto-vegetarians that consume milk products. By the way, in India, when buying like groceries, meat. this label means vegetarian, and this one means not vegetarian. Oh, okay. Nonetheless, the remainder of the population does typically eat some kind of of animal protein, mostly in the forms of seafood or chicken, oh, see, but almost never that. beef or pork, unless it's Muslim or Christian minorities scattered throughout the West and East areas. Now let's talk about I the role of cattle, chicken. shall we? India has more cattle and livestock than anywhere else in the world at around okay. 330 million. And it's interesting because since they have prevalent Hindu traditions, the killing of cows is illegal in many of the states except for a few, and each state has varying degrees they of punishment. They just walk around on the street with cows. everybody, huh? Keyword intentional. Cows accidentally get hit by cars all the time. <gasps> Once a cow is too old to produce milk, it typically is released into the open to die naturally in the wild, ideally. Nonetheless, male cattle get it much worse, as they are deemed as kind of useless. Some places use them as draft animals for labor, some religious sects use them as sacrifices, but otherwise oh. they are typically sold to the underground market for beef or hides. To this day, there are about six times as many female cows as male well, cattle. Because they want the milk, that right? Means, yeah, something's happening to the males. Nonetheless, uh -oh. India does have the third <laughs> highest <laughs> carbon emission the rate after China and the US, fourth if you consider the EU. However, emission per capita, they rank pretty low at only about two kilotons per person. Oh. They that with Qatar at about 40. There are wow. 94 national parks, 501 animal sanctuaries across the country where oh, you can find some of the national animals like things. the peacock, the, the peacock? National River Dolphin, the king cobra, the, the, oh, I want the no cobras. highest population of Bengal tigers in the world, which are all highly protected. India also has the most irrigated land in the world, which allows them to become the number one producer of multiple products like millet, bananas, lemons, limes, mangoes, ginger. Oh, ginger, I know about the mangoes. Everybody talk about the mangoes up in India. About 75 of the world's spices alone come from. That's India. right. I got your spices Food. too. Typically, you can find the staples roti, chapati, and naan 
in the north, idli and dosa in the south, and everybody eats rice. The more commonly commercialized Indian foods that we in the west grew up knowing, like I samosas, like tikka masala, Talk tapirons. about all the food. My favorite Indian dish, palak paneer. What? What These is usually that? come from the northern regions of India. Mm, seriously, what India took spinach and made it fat. I love you guys. Fat spinach! <laughs> their chutneys and pickled foods as well as beef since there's a high number of Muslims and Christians. Pickled mango, mango Kula, pickles. Some of the best curries like porials, sambras, rasams, and tutus. And tutus. the East is known for having the best desserts like peda, oh, yeah. rasgula, or shonde. Oh, they speak which, in my it language. It's so desserts. diverse and complex that sometimes even Indian people need translators when going to different Really? Schools. It's about to get ten times well, more confusing in about three, language two, to one. <laughs> Shashi Turur once said, In India, we celebrate the commonality of major differences. We are a land of belonging rather than blood. First of all, oh, India has a population of about 1.3 billion people and is the second most populous country in the world after China, with about 18% of the world's population. About 72% of the country is Indo Aryan and a quarter are Dravidian, and the majority of the remainder are Mongoloid, Asian, and other people. Mongoloid? They also use the Indian rupee as their currency, they use the Type C, D, and M plug outlets, and they drive on the left side. Oh, By the way, technically, I'm already. I drive on the left side. Over here, we're supposed to drop them. Fan Friday videos, so I don't want to go to jail. Uh oh. Again. Uh -oh. Mind, those statistics that I just mentioned are incredibly generalized. Of the Indo Aryan and Dravidian communities, there are about 2,000 different ethno linguistic people groups in India with about 645 district indigenous tribes, 52 major ones. So obviously, we can't cover them all, but what we do know is <laughs> that the a lot. is very Who talks different from the South. For one, the North mostly Who speaks in languages that are all related to the Indo Aryan branch, with languages like Hindi, Bengali, Punjabi, and Gujarati. Punjabi! Whereas the South speaks a completely unintelligible See, I know the Tamil and the Telugu. Yalam and Kannada. <laughs> Otherwise, there's also pockets of Sino Tibetan and Austro Asiatic languages Canada, spoken in the far north. At East. Canada Lights, Kumar? Uh, yeah, like, is that where Canada Kumar is? Each other. Great question. Although India does not have an official language, there are 22 recognized national languages, and of these, two are the most prevalent, taught in schools and used by government officials Hindi and English. And very often, oh. these two are like mixed mid sentence. It's weird. Don't be surprised if you hear someone speaking Hindi and then suddenly finishing off in English. It's like, it's up with a good super delicious verses. And I was like, what is And I was like, trying to, like, why are you even trying to? Do that. I know, right? And the I, are, I understand half of what they say. Bob Saget with a chainsaw. Now, of course, let's I discuss the one thing that goes hand in hand with India: Hinduism. About eighty percent of India claims to be Hindu, or at least part of the Hindu practicing community. Now, we don't have time to explain everything about the, the tenets and multi-layered philosophies and practices of Hinduism. If you want to know, just talk to a Hindu person. But basically, one thing you do need to know is that Hindu-driven ideologies pretty much dominate most of life in India. Everything from family to business. You will see colorful, mesmerizing oh shrines, temples, statues, and Beautiful. rituals being performed every. Everywhere, even in public. On the Bharat Mata, the mother of India, statues are everywhere. She's like the symbol of really? India. The largest Hindu pilgrimage, the Kumela, happens every three years, rotating between four cities in which the adherents bathe in the Ganges River oh, and enjoy a massive that. festival with tens of millions of people. Oh, I want to go to it! You can practically see it happening After in space. COVID. Now, a controversial topic After in COVID. relation to Hinduism would be the caste system, which is basically a belief that people are born into a socioeconomic like life one. that they are not like that. Into. Today, however, the system is more fluid see, and that's good. than it used to be from yeah. a long time ago. And thanks to economic reform, Forms, anybody with enough drive can kind of move up the social ladder okay. regardless of birth. Nonetheless, India is home to every major religion in the world, even a few Jews, including the Benai Menashe, an indigenous group that claimed to be one of the lost tribes of Israel. In fact, Judaism and Christianity actually had a head start in India way before it even kicked off in Europe. As tradition holds, Cochin, or Malabar Jews, migrated around 1000 BC to trade during the times of King Solomon, and in 5380, Thomas the Apostle of Jesus arrived in the first church in India. Today, All most Christians are found places. in the southwest and far east seven sisters regions. India also holds the highest population of Sikhs, Jains, and Zoroastrians, mostly found in the Sikhs. north, and the second largest Muslim population but in the world after the Indonesia. Other two. Most Muslims are populated around the northwest areas by Pakistan or in the east by Bangladesh. Okay. Oh, and don't forget the Buddhists. In fact, oh, Buddhism yeah, actually Buddhism. started in India. Today, the Dalai Lama even takes refuge in Tespur in the state of Assam. Oh, that was a lot of information. Oh, I know, how did you? Now you can probably get a grasp of how incredibly mixed and diversified <laughs> India's population is, but what exactly holds the country together? Oh, well, good. for one, you kind of have to understand Indian history, which will take way too long to explain, but in the quickest way I can put it, Indus oh. Valley, Maurya and Gupta empires, Southern empires, Golden Age, this Middle too Kingdom, this too much. religions come flocking in, the North fell to the Delhi Sultanate, the South became the Vijaya Nagara the Empire, Vijayan. the Mughal Empire starts, British East India Company, direct British rule, nationalist movements, independence, <laughs> republic, economic liberalization in 1991, and here we are today. <laughs> Vijaya. Oh, Essentially, see, it used to be made up of around 500 smaller royal princely states. That's and where when my the mind came goes in, to. They kind of exploited them to manage such a huge population. Although India is a democratic federal.
federal republic and the largest democracy in the world, the old royal families still exist today and although they have no political power, they really? hold high positions of influence in their communities across oh. India. So today, technically you could meet someone that would be considered an Indian prince or princess. Nonetheless, the biggest thing that really united Indians in the past two centuries would probably be their hatred of British rule. It was kind of like, well, this is not cool. <laughs> yeah. I'm mostly we British. We together in a... I'm in the state. U.S., but my, my DNA says I'm like 70%. One good thing you can say that came out Don't of hate me. was that it kind of stopped all the internal squabbling and unified the groups towards one common That's goal, good. to get rid of imperialism. Today, Indians are just proud to be Indian. I mean, a Tamil soccer oh. player can get cheered on by a Rajasthani. A Punjabi pop star can sell out tickets in Orissa. Oh. Speaking of which, all Indians love movies and... Oh, yeah! The largest film industry in terms of volume, pumping out nearly 2,000 films <laughs> per year. Surprisingly, Nigeria pumps out more. What? The box office revenues grossed out at only only about $2 billion dollars annually compared to Hollywood at over $10 billion. But still, it's impressive. And keep in mind, it's not just Bollywood, but it's also Tollywood. Yeah. Oh, I know. Sandalwood and, like and, and uh, in India. Oh, Mollywood. Like in India. There's one scene where everybody breaks out in song and there's almost always a happy ending. Unfortunately, mainstream media has also put an aesthetic strain on many of the, the people Bollywood as it's almost become an obsession to be light or fair-skinned, causing people to go so far as to buy skin aging products. Don't Some other controversies that. include things like illiteracy being an issue in many parts oh. of the country, especially in the rural areas, but I mean, come on, when your country has literally hundreds of different writing systems, go figure, That's I mean, true. give them a break. That's also, true. many of you guys, the Indian geography peeps, have asked me to bring awareness to the fact that India does unfortunately have some of the highest rates of human trafficking <gasps> and oh, child no. slavery. Oh no! crack down and culture is slowly it. We gotta stop For that. now, it's a sad reality that oh, still does exist. Hey, you're at GN, we talk about the good and the bad, I'm just saying. Otherwise, sports do definitely tie everyone together as well, especially cricket. cricket. I know about that Even cricket! They also used to do really well in field hockey. Did India you? also has a lot of their own indigenous sports like Dopkel and Assam. Um, bull racing in Kerala, in Supnar, rod pushing in Mizoram, right. Malakamba, the strange pole yoga gymnastics thing in the south. Otherwise, some notable people what? from India or of Indian descent the might be like Siddhartha Gautama or the Buddha, Mahavir, Ashoka the Great, Prithviraj Chauhan, Aurangzeb, like Shivaji of the Maratha Empire, Mohandas or Mahatma Oh, yeah, we know him. Gandhi, and her. Hash Chanda Bose, Jawahar Lal Nehru, Rabindranath Tagore, C.V. Raman, Satyendra Nath Bose, Bhagat Singh, Dr. A.P.J. Abdul Kalam, Shah Rukh. Khan, Amin Shah Rukh Khan, Amir Khan, Salman Khan, Priyanka, oh, all the Khans. King, Priyanka, Indar Pichai, Satya Narayana Nadella, A R Rahman, Sachin Tendulkar, and Mahendra Singh Dhoni. There's also literally millions of other famous people I missed out on. If you want to mention them, please. There's a comment section below. Use it. In the meantime, we gotta finish this info marathon, shall we? Here we go. Now, no surprise, India is huge and therefore has a huge international outreach when it comes to diplomacy mm -hmm. to almost everyone except their immediate neighbors. First of all, countries with large population percentages of Hindus and Indians but like they're our friends. China, Suriname, Trinidad and Tobago, Mauritius and Malaysia typically stay close to India's roster of go-to friends. Oh. They enjoy cordial relations with trade. Now, the UK may have left on a sour note, but they still have a lot of ties to their former colonizer okay, in terms of business okay. and tourism. India is still part of the Commonwealth, not Commonwealth realm. There's a difference. Oh, and the UK has over 1.5 million citizens of Indian descent. As mentioned in the China episode, China is kind of like India's I'm only here to do business with you and nothing else friend as drama still hasn't subsided in regards to the territory conflicts. Now, when it comes to the U.S., things started kind of sour back in the 70s oh, during the no. Indo-Pakistan. We're War friends now! We're friends! The U.S. sided with Pakistan, their arch nemesis. Today, relations have cooled off. Mostly, the U.S. supports India's move towards democracy yes. and is a key ally in the military conflicts in the Middle East. When it comes to their best friends, however, most of the Indians I talked to have said Russia and really? Bhutan. Russia, Russia? Because during the indo pak wars, Russia came in and supported them, and ever since then, each country has held oh, a high okay. position of respect for the other, especially as global superpowers. Bhutan oh. and India signed a treaty of friendship almost immediately after independence. The two countries have shared interests and a currency pegged system as well. Bhutan even supported the annexation of their cousins in the Sikkim state into India as it gave a nice buffer of land from China's stake to their claim. In conclusion, you will not find anywhere else on earth like India. Thousands and millions of people inhabiting a colorful, majestic, green, slightly gritty at times slab of earth, blessed and cursed in so many ways. चीजें समझने में आसानी हो जाती है जब वो बीच बीच में कुछ पावर पॉइंट प्रेजेंटेशन आती है इमेजेस लाते हैं तो इसलिए चीजें में मजा आता है जानने के लिए भी और उत्सुकता होती है इस वीडियो जब सामने आई जा रही थी लगातार चलती जा रही थी बोलते जा रहा था बोलते जा रहा था बोलते जा रहा था रुकने का नाम ही नहीं सांस तो लेना ही नहीं है जी ना सामने वाला सांस लेगा ना खुद सांस लेगा तो वीडियो बहुत अमेजिंग थी अगर आपको मेरे सेक्शन देखने में अगर मजा आए तो वीडियो को लाइक जरूर करना चैनल सब्सक्राइब जरूर करना तो मिलते हैं किसी दूसरी वीडियो में बाय बाय टेक केयर थैंक्स फॉर वॉचिंग